Hi, Timothy Younger here. In this video, we're going to install the GNOME Software Center on a Chromebook. So typical to say Windows where you can find your apps or like the Apple Store or something like that, you can get apps and quickly install them on a Chromebook this way. And it's like a visual editor. It's not having to use the terminal. The first thing we do have to do before we install this, however, is to set up Linux on a Chromebook and install the terminal. If you've already set up Linux, uh, you can jump ahead. I'll leave um, a link in the description to uh, where in the video uh, we run the terminal command. But for everyone else, we're going to enable Linux. So we're going to open up our settings here. And we're going to go to advanced developers. So we go on the side here, we go to advanced developers, and then we have this Linux development environment and we turn this on. We'll click next. I'm going to keep my username. You can change it if you want. Um, and I'm going to keep the recommended size. This can be changed either now by using custom or at a later point. Uh, I'm going to click install and it's going to go ahead and take a few moments to do that. I'm going to come back once it's installed. Okay, uh, Linux is installed once this terminal pops up here. I'm gonna just increase the font here so you can see what I'm doing. So let me change the font to size 20. And let me make this bigger. And we're gonna make sure everything is up to date. So we're gonna type sudo apt update and sudo apt update grade. I'm going to do a dash Y so I don't have to answer yes to the additional space and I'm going to hit enter. Okay, so everything is updated. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to right click on the terminal and click pin here. I'm going to close out my settings at this point because I don't need them anymore. I'm going to clear this out and what I'm going to do now is install the GNOME Software Center. So I'm going to type sudo apt install GNOME software, and then a space, and then GNOME uh, package kit. And I'm going to hit enter. And you'll see that they're requesting that this takes 97.8 megabytes of space. I'm going to say yes and hit enter. OK, that's run through. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to keep the terminal open for a minute, but I'm going to open up my launcher and I see this software here. You may have to go down to your Linux apps here uh, to see it, but mine's right up near the top. So I'm just going to click on that and that's going to load up. Okay, so I'm going to pin this right here. And you'll see it says no application data found. So I'm going to close this out for a moment. And what I'm going to do is do a sudo apt update here and hit enter. OK, and now what I'm going to do is right click on this and click shut down Linux. OK, and now once Linux is shut down, I'm going to restart the software. OK, once it restarts, you'll see that the software catalog is being downloaded. Um, if it doesn't start up right away and it says there's no packages to be found, just do a sudo apt update and restart Linux a couple times, and then it'll go and grab the package. Okay, and we see that we have uh, these apps loaded up. We have editor picks here. You know, it's gedit is one of the editor picks. Gnome Builder is here, a weather app. Gnome Maps, Gnome Calculator. Um, if I want a calculator, I can click on this and see what more about what it's about. Um, I can go down here, the license is a free license. Look at the reviews, it's great. Another one says it's broken. We'll see, let's install. So it's gonna go ahead and prepare and install. And after it's done preparing, it does give you a status bar here uh, that'll jump a little bit along the way. And it'll take a moment, so I'll come back once it's installed. Okay, it's come back and it has installed. You can launch it from here, or if you click up here um, and I go down here, let's see if I can find it. Sometimes you have to dig around. Ah, here it is, right, right here, calculator. So I'll click on that. 
Okay, and maybe I want to pin that. And let's test it out. So we do two plus two equals four. Seems to work perfectly. Okay, so I can close that out. Now, if you're on this channel, you're probably interested in some development tools. So let's go back here to the main page and let's go to developer tools. And it'll take a moment to load up. It is running a little slower because I am filming. Uh, so we see we have Emacs, Genie, Bluefish. Uh, these are all ones. I don't know if I've covered Genie, but I've covered Bluefish, um, Emacs, a fair amount. Uh, we go all down. We see we see a bunch of different things we can install. Um, you know, Spider for Python development. Um, Thony, another Python uh, IDE. Uh, site text editor. Eric, another Python. Um, you got Emacs just for the terminal. Uh, and Wita, I think, how, how you say that? I haven't used that one. Code blocks for C, C++, uh, and Fortran. Um, what else have we got? So we got, we got a bunch of stuff down here. I mean, stuff I've never even heard of, but uh, a bunch of stuff you can try out. Let's go ahead and take a look at Emacs. So we can go down, see Emacs, a little brief description. It's a free license, obviously. Um, it gives you version 27.1, tells you the space it's going to take. This is saying it doesn't work, but let's try it, OK? I'll give you a hint. It does work. It does. OK, so now Emacs is installed. So if we go up here. Uh, and we check around, it's not there, go back, um, where are we, where are we, Emacs, might just need to, we might actually need to launch it the first time from here, so let's, let's do that, let's launch, okay, so it took, it took a moment to launch, let me just close it out, so it opened up two windows here, what's that? So, okay, so, uh, you know, here Emacs launches up just fine. Uh, I'm going to pin this because, you know, I like to keep my apps on my taskbar here that I use a lot. So you can go ahead and start customizing Emacs, okay? Uh, let's go back here, and I don't think I see GVim here, but I know they have GVim. So some of these stuff... GVim, I consider it a development tool, but it might be under utilities or productivity. Let's check productivity. Go to productivity here and we scroll on down. I don't know if I see it. There's a bunch of stuff here. Craft, I don't know what that is. Um, okay, and we have GVim here. Now, the other thing I think we could do is if we go back to here, there's a search up here and we can type in, let's type in GVim. And it's gonna load and then you can see, okay, we come up here with GVim, it's got five stars, uh, free, of course. Um, and we can install GVim, okay? So we can install that and run it just like anything else. Uh, if we go back here, no other thing, you might be interested in, let's find GIMP. Okay, we can install GIMP through the GNOME Software Center. So there's basically a ton of apps you can easily install through this software center. Uh, and it makes it just easy. It's a nice graphical interface. You don't have to install them from the command line once you set it up. So I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, could you please give it a like as we'll help get out to more people. And also, if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing as it really does help the channel grow. Uh, I want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.